Hi friends. As you know, if you've been here before, we discuss all things witchy in this space. However, it is fair to say that I have some areas of special interest and particular expertise, spirit work and ancestors to name just two. And I'm mentioning just those two right now because of all the videos that I do, the biggest percentage of my comments come on the videos about spirit work and ancestor work. So viewers tend to have just more questions about those areas, I think, because information's not as readily available. So I am starting a new thing, a segment, I'm not sure what to call it, but a new thing here at Blade and Broom called Talking Back in which I am just going to address some of the comments related to um, particular topics. So today that's going to be about working with spirits, demons, and familiars. Welcome to Blade and Broom, your favorite witchy ants cottage tea shop where we talk about all things magic and witchcraft. And today we're talking back about spirits. I'm Lorelai Black, and I am so glad you're here. Thank you for all the ways that you support the channel, including through likes and subscribes, as well as checking out my other projects and the resources that are down in the links below. You are fantastic humans. So a couple, three, four notes before we get started. First, today's talking back is just going to be about spirits, demons, and familiars. I've got a whole other video planned for talking about ancestors, um, and that'll be airing two weeks from this one. So make sure that you're subscribed and getting notifications so that you can keep up with that one. Number two, for the most part, I will not be addressing any of the troll type comments. I usually just delete those. But Auntie Lorelei, isn't that like censorship? or gatekeeping or something. No love, it's boundary setting to protect my mental health. Those folks are more than welcome to create their own channels and their own content to promote their own ideas. I am in no way stopping them from doing that, nor will I go onto their channels to make rude comments. Along those lines, any kind of comment that starts with repent now and or citing the Bible as some kind of reason for why I am wrong um, isn't mostly going to get shown here or really any response from me in the comments. Again, I typically just delete those. If this is where you're coming from, my channel isn't for you and your church isn't for me. And I call that fair enough. So point number three, the comments that I am actually sharing are either typical of the kinds of comments and questions that I get in like private DMs and personal conversations that I have with people on this topic. And so they're almost like an FAQ level of response or they're something more unusual that allows me the opportunity to expound or explain on a point that I wouldn't normally give like a whole video to. And finally, number four of, of the groundwork bits, right, of the notes, is that we need to have a clear understanding of terms. And I'm going to keep reiterating this to help disseminate this knowledge. The word demon comes from the Greek daimon, and it literally literally just means spirit. There was no negative connotation. There was no positive connotation. It was just a spirit. And it was used to talk about all kinds of spirits 
from gods to ghosts. In fact, each person was said to have an agathos daimon, or good spirit that was with them from birth until death and acted as a guardian, a guide, a helper, um, a source of inspiration and, and right living. What a lot of folks today would call a guardian angel and what most witches would call a familiar spirit. Likewise, when we're discussing terms, the word angel also comes from the Greek, comes from the Greek word angelos, and it just means messenger. And like daimon, there was no positive or negative connotation to that word. It just meant somebody who was delivering a message could apply to a spirit, could apply to a human person. And because there's no connotation in the original on either of these words and on the way that we find them in a lot of the really old grimoire texts, it means that you have really just wonderful, helpful, positive, like bright, shiny, sparkly diamonds or demons and some real like jerk face, nasty, you do not want them in your space or in your life, angels and everything in between. Let's go then. You don't know what you talking about. <laughs> oh, I said I wasn't going to feed the trolls and I'm sticking to that. However, this kind of comment gives me the opportunity to tell you, my friends, a little bit about my credentials, which you may not actually know. You may just like the channel, but not necessarily know what my background is. So spirit work has actually been one of the major focuses of my witchcraft and my sort of magical practice, spiritual experience since before I ever started practicing witchcraft. My stepmother and grandfather were very um, interested and involved with spiritism and I had lots of exposure to working with and knowing about spirits and spirit work from the time that I was about 11, which is when they came into my life, the stepmother and grandfather, that is. <laughs> so I grew up with certain practices and beliefs that really opened me in a lot of ways to the spirit realms and made me aware of. And then when I did start practicing witchcraft, I have actually dedicated a lot of my study and practice to working with spirits. And I've been working as a witch since I was 20, I think it was before my 21st birthday. And I'm in my late 40s now. In fact, I even wrote this rather hefty tome on the subject just of working with the spirits of the Goetia or the spirits of the Legion, the 72 spirits of the Clavicula Solomonis. This book is called The Witch's Key to the Legion, A Guide to Solomonic Sorcery, and it's available on Amazon, or you can get signed copies in my Etsy shop. Quite unfortunately for me, Amazon did a weird thing when I published the revised and expanded version of this book about a year ago at the end of 2021. Um, and they linked it to the first edition of the book, which was published just about 10 years ago and was about one fifth of the size. And so a lot of the reviews from that original publication were pretty accurate for that book, saying that it needed significant expansion um, and that it didn't fulfill on certain promises in terms of giving people actual tools to work with these spirits, which is why I revised it and expanded it so significantly. Um, there is an entire grimoire section in here. There are a lot of discussions on the hows and the wherefores and the why fours of how to do this work. Um, and then there are just lots and lots of tools in here for approaching this work, even if you're brand new to it. But Amazon still has the old reviews linked to the new book. So I think that honestly gives potential customers a frankly inaccurate 
idea of what's happening with this book. If you're a witch that's interested in spirit work at all, much less um, goetic work specifically, working with these 72 spirits. If you're interested in spirit work, plain and simple, this book is going to be a great resource for you because half of the book is the how-to. It's how to do spirit work. And it would be really awesome if you could help an author out and go to Amazon and like upvote uh, Mark as helpful. The reviews that are actually from like 2021, 2022. <laughs> so that the ones from like 2013, 2015 will stop being so prominent because they're outdated. And if you've read the book, I would love for you to leave a review. I have a course I just finished that includes a familiar spirit. My professor provides students with familiars. He says he grants familiars from archangels and the Shem angels, etc. Is that something you've heard of? Because I've always heard that demons only grant familiars. Yeah, I have a few thoughts on this one. <laughs> Honestly, folks, I think we all need to learn to be very skeptical around systems, teachers, philosophies that promote that there's only one right way to do things. So no, demons in the classical goetic sense are not the only way that a person can come to have a familiar spirit. In fact, there are lots of methods um, that we see in magical manuscripts and in folklore, including inheriting one from um, a, a witchy ancestor. So really any type of spirit can connect you with a familiar or can volunteer to be a familiar directly to you. So say that you've decided to reach out to a spirit like Buer, who is known for giving good familiars, but Buer could themselves offer to be your familiar spirit. Like that could be who you work with directly and not a spirit underneath them. So that means that somebody who is working with archangels and working with the Shem Hemfarash has a perfectly valid way of connecting to familiar spirits. As an interesting note though, the Shem Hemfarash, um, which means the explicit name or the explicit name of God, is a group of 72 angels who are directly linked to the 72 spirits of the Clavicula Solomonis or the Goetia. So for me personally, on some level, I feel that going to the angel, one of these 72 angels to get a familiar through, ultimately through one of the demons that they're supposed to have control over is a lot like going to a very well-respected doctor who then turns to the local drug dealer to get you your weed. Ultimately, you're fine with the end result, but you just wanted this air of respectability and clean hands. That's a total illusion because it was still achieved in the same way. You just used a middleman. And I'm not saying you like the commenter, I'm saying you general, like if this is the process that, that one uses. And really there's like a lot of assumption and bias to sort through with this practice of like going through the 72 Shem angels who then tap the 72 demons to get to a familiar. When we consider that the demons, the daemons, the spirits um, of the Goetia, of the Clavicula Solomonis, are, uh, and of other medieval grimoires, they're almost all ancestral spirits, genie loci, and deities of displaced and subjugated peoples. Question, is there a diagram or copy of what the triangle to be drawn on the floor looks like available online? 
I can't find any reference to said triangle, or do I even need one to summon a familiar spirit? So here are a few variations of the triangle with links to the sources down below. I actually refer to the triangle usually as a pyramid because we work in multi-dimensional space, not just in two dimensions. So this one that I'm showing you right now is a very classical triangle and can be found in almost any copy of the Lesser Key of Solomon or the Clavicula Solomonis. This one right here is a simpler version that is used by some ceremonial magicians. And here are a couple of adapted ones for use within specific traditions. This one is Thelemic in its application, and this one was designed for use within my own craft tradition and features the names of the great powers as we know them. And I offer you these examples because I want you to understand that even though there are some very like classical models uh, of what has been done, there's also, um, a distinct precedence of doing and adapting for ways that make sense to you and the way that you practice. The triangle with all of these angelic Hebrew names may not make sense for what you're trying to do, because if you don't know who those powers are and how to tap into them, they're not very helpful for you. <laughs> so um, adapt and make sense for what you do. Now, the next question is, do you need a triangle or do you need a pyramid? To which I respond, eh. In my experience in research, I actually don't believe that they're useful for like containing and controlling a spirit, which is what a lot of the classical models are about. And that's certainly what Crowley and Mathers were purporting and promoting um, in their version of the clavicula solomonis. Nor am I particularly interested in containing and controlling spirits. However, all that being said, I do think that the pyramid is a really great vessel for manifestation. So it can be really super helpful when you're working with a spirit that's new to you or that hasn't been manifesting much because it's uh, not particularly called on by a lot of people. Um, to have that sort of structure from where it goes from spiritual essence to physical manifestation can be a really useful tool. Then again, you may be like the bee's knees at manifesting, so maybe you don't need that extra assistance to help the spirit manifest, to be able to be present with you, talk with you, communicate with you, do magic with you in your space. If that's the case, then something like a triangle or a pyramid is going to be very superfluous. So I would say experiment, try it out, see what works. Mine was given at birth. He's in his sixth body now. Last time I did the transfer. Cool, cool. I'm not entirely sure what all that means, but again, we all have like different ways of doing stuff. So I'm glad it's working out for you. I've never heard of putting a spirit in a triangle and threatening them. I always heard to treat them with respect and that you can't control them just like they can't control you. I'm new to your channel and love it so far. That's awesome. I'm glad that more good ethical information that advocates reciprocal relationship with spirits is actually getting disseminated. I know that I personally have a couple of author friends um, who are colleagues in this magical work, um, like Taylor Elwood, Bill Dubendak, who are putting out books and work that are very much in line with my own philosophies about developing reciprocal, mutually beneficial, mutually respectful relationship with spirits. The putting them in a triangle and controlling them and threatening them comes from a, a very different and like old school mindset. Um, it is very present in a lot of the grimoire magic, which is blending um, Christian and Jewish mysticism with this magical practice as well. And so there's a lot of like drawing on the names of God to command and control the spirits. But I honestly think that this is a trend 
away within our society, away from the what I would call or have heard called the colonizer mindset, in which we feel like we have a birthright or some divinely given sense of superiority that gives us permission to control them, whoever we and them are in these scenarios. So in this case, it would be we as humans or as sorcerers, witches, mages to control spirits. And I'm frankly glad that we're moving away from that kind of mindset because it's not served us very well. As for not hearing about the triangle just in general, like not knowing about that method, I think that's probably more of a difference between um, ceremonial forms of magic and witchcraft and sort of more neo-pagan, neo-wiccan forms um, that we see a lot more, a lot more of on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Tumblr, you know, all of the places where we interact socially. Um, Neo-Wicca and Neo-Paganism are a lot more common, a lot more popular, have a lot more mass appeal than more ceremonial types of magic do. And then you do see references um, to certain types of older magic ceremonial types of magic in some cases from traditional crafters, folkloric crafters like me, who are looking to the pre-modern grimoires and sometimes even earlier magical manuscripts for inspiration and guidance. And thank you so much for the compliment on the channel. I hope that you keep getting good things here. What demons are good or helpful? And then they went on to say something like, no, seriously, I'm wanting to know which ones are good for summoning. <laughs> Oof. That's actually kind of tough to answer just because the list would be quite long. I've done a lot of research with the 72 spirits that are in this book, which is my adaptation of the Clavicula Solomonis, the Lesser Key of Solomon, the Goetia. So I know these spirits best, but I'm going to go ahead and say that there are other demons, daimons, spirits that are listed in other pre-modern grimoires and other earlier manuscripts from way back that are also very helpful um, in lots of ways. Now, these are the ones that I know best. <laughs> so in my book, I very helpfully offer a couple of tables and lists for finding just exactly what you're looking for. One such set of tables I have labeled areas of influence and interest, which lets you know what spirits are talented in which areas. So you can find somebody that's a match for the kind of work that you're actually looking to do. And I also have a small list um, that my own primary familiar provided to me as sort of a do not call list. She suggested that these would not be good spirits to work with. She did not recommend that anybody work with them. Um, so I pass that informa information, information, information along to my readers just because I want to be honest with you about what it is that I know from the spirit world. And it's raining now and I have a metal roof, so you're going to hear that. There are only eight spirits on this list of the 72. So only eight that my familiar spirit considered so dangerous that you should not be contacting them at all. And I will be additionally honest and say that I know people who have some really good relationships with a couple of those spirits, but I consider that one a conjurer beware sort of scenario. The other 65 outside of those eight, 64, 66, my math is bad, <laughs> the others, <laughs> 72 minus eight are amazing or neutral. They're anywhere from neutral to amazing, but your potential relationship with them is gonna depend on things like shared areas of interest, shared talents, and personality compatibility. 
just like it would be for any friend that you make in the physical realm. You're going to get along better with some than with others. Friend or coworker. And just like meeting actual humans, you know that there are some people that everybody else thinks are fantastic and wonderful and they really get the job done. But when you try to work with them, it like all falls apart and you can't get anything accomplished and they don't return your phone calls and they never get back with you and like you wonder what all the fuss is about because they don't seem so fantastic to you. And you have other people that you know that like everybody talks about, you know, how flaky and um, dramatic and like all of these other negative things about them. But they're somebody that you can rely on and that has always been there for you and has been like a ride or die. So mileage varies. <laughs> But I get it. You're probably actually looking for like a list of spirits that I would personally vouch for. So here is a little list of spirits that I have worked with either very closely or like more at a distance, but professionally, but would actually recommend them to other people that are looking to tap into um, either getting started working with the Goetia or have a particular area of interest that overlaps with one of these spirits. Samajena, Baal, Paimon, Astaroth, Zagon, Amdusius, Gramary, Decarabia, and Bifrons are ones that I have worked with personally. And think are pretty fantastic. There are a few that my coven mates, my close friends, my other sort of like witchy magical friends in the community have talked to me about working with that sound pretty darn cool. I've just never had an opportunity or particular draw to get acquainted with them and those include Focalore, Vepar, Cameo, Buer, Bune, Halfus and Malfus, Oribus, Ose, and Amy. And of course, as I mentioned, there are other lists of demonologies or spirit indexes out there that list spirits that some of them overlap with these. There are some of these spirits that are mentioned in multiple um, spirit indices and some of those spirit indices have spirits that you won't see in here as well. So there are lots of really helpful spirits out there to be able to work with and lots of information about them if you're willing to go digging. I'm dealing with trickster spirits. It started when I used a pendulum to reach out to my guides. I thought I was talking to them but about five to eight months later I found out they were tricksters. One just says random things and the other uses my feet as a pendulum. They can read my mind and before I thought it was a doorkeeper. Obviously I am young and I don't know what to do. He uses my body as a pendulum, my feet for yes and no, can read my mind and can move certain parts of me without touching me. I really need help. I'm not a witch. I can't do spells, none of that. I'm copying this on many videos. It's not spam. Okay, so my advice to this person was that any one of the banishing techniques I mentioned in my six ways to banish in witchcraft video um, should work, right? Like they're all really classical, highly useful, used in some cases worldwide banishing techniques. If one is not effective though, and sometimes one isn't, Three in combination almost always is. And I had even mentioned in that video um, the combination of bell, book, and candle, which is banishing with fire and light, um, sound, and uh, sacred words. However, I wanted to add some other thoughts here for your consideration on a comment such as this one. So many thoughts. I'll try to keep it concise. A, 
always ask the pendulum to show you yes and to show you no before you get started, like at the beginning of every session. B, bring in protective space and guardians, particularly when you're working with a new spirit, um, until you get familiar with their energy and can distinguish them from other spirits. You can cast a really simple circle or lay a compass. You can ask the great powers to watch over you and protect you, help you to be discerning. Not a witch? That's okay. You can say a prayer to whoever you say prayers to. C. Know how to banish before you ever summon. D. Understand that all kinds of folks, from trickster spirits to like shysty psychic advisors, take advantage of newbies. They don't all do it, but there is a major trend <laughs> toward doing that. And there always, always has been in every realm of everything. If you go in, without preparing yourself with a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of know-how, and like with your eyes wide open, then you're setting yourself up to being taken advantage of. E, sometimes people come to spiritual and mystical experiences hoping to be titillated rather than being enlightened. And in my experience, there are always gonna be spirits out there who are happy to help give you that titillation or that thrill, that fear factor, if that's what you're actually coming to experience. See my earlier statement about taking advantage of noobs. Could you please give me a book recommendation on familiar spirits? I'm currently have, uh, having, reading, I'm current, I bet it's reading. I'm currently reading The Witch is Familiar by Raven Grimassi, but I wonder if I could find some other books written by occult practitioners about familiars. I am so glad you asked. Okay, so if you like scholarly treatments, then I highly recommend Emma Wilby's Cunning Folk and Familiar Spirits. Oh, it's so good. Might I humbly suggest my own, which is key to the Legion, <laughs> which I might have mentioned before. As I mentioned earlier, it is a pretty comprehensive guide to working with spirits in general and it is um, a really comprehensive source book for working with the 72 spirits of the clavicula salomonis or the lamegaton the legion i am personally also working on two other books right now um, that i hope to have forthcoming in 2023 is sort of my target like early 2023 is my target for at least the first of them to come out one is called The Witch's Key to the Unseen, and it's going to act as more of a, like a guidebook um, for witches who are interested in working with all kinds of spirits and like talk about different types of spirits and how we connect with them, some exercises and that kind of thing. Um, then I'm also working on a collaborative project with some other practitioners called The Witch's Key to Goetic Familiars which is more of a deep dive look or personal look into how individuals are currently working with some of the spirits in this book. Um, so some of those 72 spirits of the Lamegaton. I am actually still accepting submissions on that. So if you're interested, please get in touch with me. You can contact me through the Red Thread app um, and it's free to join the app. So if you're working with a Goetic Familiar, I would love to hear what that work looks like for you. So like I said, both of those two books are still forthcoming. I am in the process of writing them right now. So um, the best way to keep up with my witchy projects is to join the Thread app. It's totally free to grab an account and um, I share updates and projects in the news and notes section. So you can get that for free. Um, as far as some other books, and these are not in a witchy paradigm, right? Like these are written from practitioners who are not necessarily working in a witchy milieu. Um, I would recommend 
Bill Dubendak's Spirit Relations. Taylor Elwood has two books that I recommend. One is called Walking with Magical Entities, um, and the other is called Walking with Spirits. Um, and then S. Connolly has a very comprehensive book called The Complete Book of Demonolatry. Yeah, Complete Book of Demonolatry. Now, I am going to give you the warning that because these folks are not working within a, a witchcraft perspective, and like S. Connolly in particular is working from a theistic Satanist perspective, um, that can be off-putting <laughs> if you are not also like open to hearing about those kinds of things. Um, and you may have to do some like just mental gymnastics or mental adjustment to like reset or reframe some of the concepts within your own practice. But I highly recommend that you do that because books that are only, like there are too many books that are only marketed for witches, by witches, who have never read outside of witchcraft books. And they're therefore missing a lot of context and a lot of information that you would benefit from having. So I, I very much recommend those books. And the Walking with Magical Entities from Taylor Elwood is um, not, it's about spirits, but it's about servitors and egregores. And if you're not familiar with that concept, it's one that we will address on this channel at some point. But these are sort of like created spirits, like spirits that you bring into existence. They did not exist before you did the thing. That's a whole other subreddit. And Jason Miller also has a new book out, like just came out in May of 2022, um, called Consorting with Spirits. I have not read it, but it looks like it's pretty good. And I think I'm going to end up getting it to do a book review here on this channel since it is definitely my bag. And that's all I have to say about that for today, friends. <laughs> that was all the comments that needed some addressing or that I thought would be good to address here. Um, I am definitely going to be doing some more videos on spirit work, um, referencing the spirits of the Legion or demons, um, talking about working with familiars. So to that end, Make sure that you've subscribed and get notifications, but also let me know what kinds of topics that you're specifically interested in about doing that work. You can post that in the comments down below. I hope that you found today's chat useful, encouraging, thought-provoking. If so, please bless me with the magic of the like button and tell your witchy friends that good stuff is happening over here at Blade and Broom. And if you would like to learn more about the type of traditional folkloric witchcraft that I practice, you can check out the Red Thread Academy, or if you'd just like to keep up with my witchy projects and shenanigans, get your free account at the Thread app and check out the news and notes sections for free content. I will see you back here next week for more witchy goodness. Bye friends! Here come I too.